Hello, this is old Mr. Kent of Mr. Kent. Dot com And here I am in Arizona on a 101 degree day in the afternoon. And why I'm doing this is normally I fly in the morning because it's cooler. But I wondered how long can I fly my uh, Mavic Air 2 on a hot day when it's 100 degrees or so and still be able to uh, keep the batteries in good shape. So that's what I'm testing out here. In the sunshine, it's about 130 degrees, but in the shade, on this day, it was uh, 101 degrees on my phone. So uh, it looks like uh, the, the uh, it was 2.13 in the afternoon, and uh, it was time to test it out. So we'll go ahead and take off. And I'm just going to fly back and forth in my son's uh, yard and uh, until it gets up to when it starts reaching 40 degrees centigrade, which is about 105 degrees, then I'll start thinking about coming, uh, turning around and coming in to land. So I'm just going to go back and forth and watch the temperature. And uh, I've read that if it gets over 125 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, that it actually damages the battery. So uh, 50 degrees centigrade is about 120 degrees. So somewhere between 40 and 50 uh, is safe. But when it hits 40, I'm going to go ahead and land. In the meantime, while I fly back and forth, I'll tell you another little story. When I was uh, getting my pilot license years ago, I had a Cessna 150, which is a, a tricycle gear, and my instructor uh, said, don't fly without making a flight plan. And then when he was teaching me how to take off on grass fields and short fields, he said, uh, and by the way, we're on pavement all the time he was teaching me. He said, pull the nose up as high as you can, give a full throttle and pull the nose up and it'll lift off sooner. So I took that, uh, took that advice because I was a new pilot and I had no idea, uh, I had no experience. But shortly after uh, I got my license, I had a good friend named Ed, and I've even written a song about Ed, but... Uh, I, uh, he had a Cessna 140, which is a tail dragger. And so the, uh, it takes off and lands much better on grassy fields and short fields than a tricycle gear like I had, which is a Cessna 150. And so uh, he had a son about the same age as my son. And by the way, it's the same son that owns this property that I'm uh, moving out to. Anyway, so uh, we packed up our planes with our sons, our camping gear, and our fishing poles and took off for an airstrip in Idaho called Moose Creek. Moose Creek is a Moose Creek airstrip is a, a, a takeoff point for smoke jumpers and there's a cabin there and uh, it's uh, just a, a really nice airstrip uh, it, and it actually has two strips but uh, so we decided that's what we do so we load, load up and we take off and of course, before I take off, I did what my instructor told me to do, and that is to uh, 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 file a flight plan. And here I am goofing around trying to do a circle around a point just for fun, but I, I want to keep the drone moving to, because of the veins on the bottom will keep, the, keep everything cooler. Well, anyway, so uh, we take off and we land, and when we got there, it was like June, uh, sometime in June, and um, the, uh, the, they they normally uh, cut the grass on these fields uh, from time to time, but when we landed, the grass was about two feet tall. So we came uh, <laughs> cutting the grass with our props as we as we landed, and we camped out for a couple of days with our boys and did some fishing and had some fun. And then when it came time to head home, uh, we started getting ready and packing up. And as we were packing up, a thunderstorm started moving our direction. Now, when you file a flight plan. Uh, if you don't show up and, and uh, close the plan, uh, after a while, they'll start looking for you. So it was, uh, uh, you know, I had to get out of there when, when it was time to go. Well, the thunderstorm kept, uh, came over us. It was pouring down rain. Uh, we loaded up the planes, taxied to the end of the airstrip, and the, the airstrip had a little bit of an incline to it. So um, he took off, and he had no trouble because of his tail dragger. And uh, then, of course, I was new and inexperienced, so when it came my turn to take off, I did exactly what the instructor told me, which was not necessarily correct. <laughs> and uh, I uh, started, uh, you know, because the grass was tall, everything was wet, and so I gave it full throttle, and uh, 
started up this, uh, this airstrip and I had the nose all the way up as far as it would go and I just was not climbing. Nothing seemed to be happening. And so um, I, uh, about halfway up the airstrip, I thought, this is crazy. So I lowered the nose just a little bit and uh, at that point, I started to gain some, uh, I got off the ground, but I was still in ground effect. And ground effect is only good, <laughs> it's only good when you're close to the ground. But because there was an incline, I couldn't get out of ground effect and I could hardly see out the window because of the pouring rain. Anyway, so as we came to the end of the airstrip, it was a straight drop down to the river. And of course, as soon as I got out, uh, it went off the strip, I was out of ground effect, which means I didn't have any lift. And uh, we started dropping, and I was looking at the treetops going by, and they looked like swords looking up at me. So finally, I had uh, enough sense to lower the nose and uh, just kind of dive down a little bit, pick up a lot of speed, and begin to be able to climb and uh, get us out of there safely. But I just practically killed my son and I on that first flight uh, out to a, a airstrip out in the mountains. And uh, I've been back there since then, and uh, we, we camped out there several times after that. But that first time was just almost, <laughs> almost deadly. Well, as you can see, I hit uh, uh, 40 degrees centigrade, which is about 100 and, uh, uh, well, 105, 106 degrees. And so now I'm gonna bring it in and um, so I know that I can fly for like at least six minutes. If I have to go out and fly in the afternoon for some strange reason, or just want to fly, uh, I don't have to watch this, uh, this notification thing. I can fly for five or six minutes and it's not gonna damage my batteries. So uh, that was uh, a good lesson for me and anybody else who lives in, uh, in Arizona. You can uh, you just go out and fly in the 100 degree weather and uh, you don't have to worry about ruining your batteries if you keep your flight short and uh, like less than six or seven minutes. Well, I want to thank you for watching and God bless. <music>